Hey y'all, it's me, Kimberly Clark. I am here in my beauty room recording the voiceover for the tutorial you are about to watch. But I just wanted to jump on camera and give you two quick little reminders. Number one, this is the third video in this initial Buy Black series in which I support black owned beauty brands, but it is not the end of my advocacy for supporting black owned beauty brands. Like I've said in my other videos, this is a long term goal to consider how we spend our money, to consider ethical consumerism, and to see how our dollars and where we invest can actually help uplift people that have been marginalized and systemically disenfranchised. I'm committing myself to make a continued investigation in my own fiscal accountability, and that means paying attention to what brands I support, why I support them, and what I share with you on this channel. I challenge all other YouTubers to make this same commitment. As YouTubers, and I think as, as we're all in quarantine and kind of realizing how important this kind of connection is, this, this kind of personal connection that we're building here on YouTube, I, I think we have to really understand the responsibility of what that means. And I think a lot of people right now in the makeup community are understanding what ethical consumerism means. We see that happening with brands, with different companies, with different influencers, really deciding who they want to support, why they want to support them. And I think this is a perfect opportunity for you to take advantage of that trend and make it more than a trend. Make it part of your life. Make this kind of ethical way of moving through the world second nature to you. I also wanted to just give a shout out to the idea of supporting local organizations. I've talked about a couple different organizations over the course of this series, uh, like the Sylvia Rivera Law Project or the Okra Project or Equal Justice Initiative. These are all organizations that I have some kind of personal connection to, and they're incredible organizations, and I'm, I'm thrilled that some of you have already reached out and have, have been supporting them. But I want to encourage you to find organizations that support marginalized people that are local to you. Here in New Orleans, uh, there's an incredible organization called Feed the Second Line. It provides food and services and buys groceries for and takes care of members of the Second Line community and Mardi Gras Indians. If you don't know what a Second Line is or what Mardi Gras Indians are, they're basically the backbone of culture in New Orleans. Basically, any kind of thing that you think of as New Orleans culture, it was probably invented or created by black people. And because of COVID-19, the elders of those communities who to continue to uphold and promote that culture are, are really in a bind. Uh, it's, it's unsafe for them to go out and shop for themselves. So the crew of Red Beans, which is a Mardi Gras crew down here in New Orleans, has created this incredible organization, Feed the Second Line, to, to help that. So if you love New Orleans culture, or if you've been here, or if you want to come here, and you want New Orleans to be the vibrant, incredible gumbo of culture that it is, please consider making a donation to Feed the Second Line down below. So I encourage you to find an organization that not only uplifts Black culture, but uplifts the people that create that culture. If you find any organizations that are doing just that, please list them in the comments down below so that everybody can find some organization near them that is really doing the work, the continued work, the necessary long-term work to keep this important movement alive. So thank you so much already for watching this video and please enjoy this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. All right, let's get into this eclectic, very joyful, fun look. Now, when I started doing this look, I really didn't know what I was gonna do, but I knew I wanted it to be something fun. Starting off with my my naked nails. Now, this is, this is a kind of medium length for my nails. I usually keep my nails really short. I can never really grow out my left pinky and my right pointer finger because those are the nails that always break first when I'm playing piano. I don't know how Lady Gaga does it with those tips, but I am a short nailed piano Leia. Starting with this two-in-one base and top coat from Brooklyn Polished. I actually have a full in-depth kind of brand overview and tutorial coming up using only polishes from Brooklyn Polished. I love this brand. Uh, they are a black-owned nail polish brand created by Ariel Terry, who is a bed style Brooklyn native. And I just love the quality of these polishes and I love what this brand stands for. Even when I apply too much of this base coat, it really smooths out nice and thin and is just a perfect kind of 
easy to use tacky base for my nail polishes. So I didn't really know where this look was gonna go when I started it, but I did know that I wanted at least one nail to match this dress that I have from Topshop. I got it a long time ago and it's just this kind of like beige background dress with a purple and pink leopard print on it. So I'm going to try to cop that exact pattern for one nail on each hand. And so I'm starting off with Feeling My Tiger Stripes by Pear Nova. This is a really thick, opaque cream polish. I've noticed that the cream polishes from Pear Nova are that very thick kind of one swipe opacity formula that uh, is really great for nail art. So I love this type of polish, but as you can see, it goes on quite thick and might be a little tricky to work with. I've noticed that the non-cream polishes from Paranova have a different have, have different consistencies, but the kind of solid cream polishes that I've used definitely are a little thick, so just be wary of that. And while that polish dries, I'm gonna do a kind of disco ball nail. So I knew I wanted like a kind of bright, shimmery accent nail to kind of contrast with the colorful, very like kind of playful pastelliness of the rest of the look. And this nail polish, Night in Shining Armor by Paranova, is perfect for that. It is a rainbow glitter hollow type polish that in one coat goes on in this kind of sheer kind of top coat consistency, but you can definitely build this up to full opacity. And I, you, as you will see, I will do that over the course of this tutorial. So basically my methodology is to put down a color, put down another color, and then go back and top up those colors, adding opacity and thickness as I as I move on. Now, normally I feel like I would plan a look a little bit more and add one coat to all the nails and then kind of go back and top it off. But like I said, I wasn't really sure where this look was going as I was doing it. So I kind of just topped off and put on second coats of the polishes that I knew were going to work as I was doing it. I'm taking this polish called Work Wife from Janet and Joe. This is a really cool vegan nail polish brand. Most of these polishes, all, all of the polishes that I'm using are vegan and most of them are uh, either five, 10 or 11 free, meaning they're free of those harmful chemicals. And Work Wife is from their new collection. It's just a really beautiful peach. And then on another nail, I'm going to take 90s Girl, this crazy hot pink neon from Janet and Joe. Now, I feel like this would pop even more over a white base, but like I said, I didn't really plan for this look, so I kind of just went along with it as I, as, I, as I saw fit, and I ended up just building up this opacity in a couple coats. And frankly, like this was, this was pretty great already, and I feel like with a white base, it would have been opaque in one coat. Then just topping off that peach shade work wife again and going back to 90s girl. Back to Brooklyn Polished. This is the shade Lady Lit. In the container, it looks like a kind of minty pastel green, but on the nail, it comes off as very neon. This is a very, very bright polish. It's like a pale, limey, neon green. But I'm truly impressed with all of these polishes being vegan and 5 to 11 chemical free. 
that they could actually be this effective. I think it's, nail polish has come a long way since I started doing my nails, which was way back before I even started doing drag. And back then I remember these kind of five free polishes being always hit or miss. And these brands have shown me that, nope, a lot has changed and there's some really great quality polishes that don't have all those harmful chemicals. So like I said, I'm going to work on the one nail look that I know what it's going to be. It's going to be copying this leopard pattern. So I'm taking 90s Girl, that hot pink shade from Janet and Joe, and going back over the beige shade, Feeling My Tiger Stripes from Paranova, to just create the kind of, I don't know, like background spots on the leopard print. And while I'm here, I'm just going to top off a second coat of that 90s girl on the nails that, are, that have a hot pink base. And I'm taking a beautiful lavender shade from Janet and Joe. This is called Lap of Luxury. And I'm going to use this to create the kind of little leopard C curves that surround those spots on the nails that were meant to match the dress. As you can see, throughout this entire look, I'm only using the brushes in the bottles. I feel like that's a key element to my aesthetic as a nail artist. I really like to create looks that don't require any additional brushes or tools. And I found really developing this skill of painting my nails with the brushes that come in the bottle is uh, has been just really useful for allowing me to, to create these looks really quickly. If these looks are time prohibitive. If, if they just take too long, then I'm not going to be interested in doing them. So eliminating the need to have additional brushes, clean them, maintain them, that really saves a lot of time for me and just frankly makes me want to do my nails more. going back in with Lady Lit, and I'm gonna start building up some kind of like abstract pattern on these peach nails. Now, this is that shade Work Wife from Janet and Joe. And I'm starting out with that green, just creating kind of like color blocky spikes. This, I think, this nail, the kind of peach-based abstract nail on both of my fingers was the one that kind of I had the least kind of forethought and idea of what I wanted to do. And as you can see throughout the look, I just keep layering on top of it and adjusting as I go to make everything kind of flow together. For me, that's kind of the therapeutic side of doing nail art like this, is it really just lets me unlock some creativity and just follow my creative impulses without having to think about it too much. There's not really any kind of specific eye shape or, or contour or trickery of, of makeup that I'm trying to create here. I'm really just free to put whatever I want on my nails. This is this incredible light blue shade Coda Water from Brooklyn Polish. Now, when I read about the name of this, I didn't know what uh, what Coda, Coda Water is. Reading about it on the website, Coda Water refers to those like super sweet like sugar water beverages that you can get at a bodega, like a deli, for a quarter. So like those little fruity drinks, that's what quarter water is. Quarter water. It costs a quarter and it's water or it's sort of like water. Brooklyn. I'm just taking this blue polish and applying in like a very kind of abstract painterly way, just some random shapes on top of that green. Then I'm taking this beautiful true blue polish from Janet and Joe called Russell's Blue. Now, Kendra Woolridge, the founder of Janet and Joe, writes about this polish on her website as being named in honor of the passing of Nipsey Hussle, who was an incredible activist and MC, uh, whose work she was introduced to by her friend Russell. Now, Nipsey Hussle uh, took his name from the comedian Nipsey Russell. So Russell's Blue seemed like an appropriate name for this polish. 
And considering this is a series celebrating Black entrepreneurship and business ownership, I think Nipsey Hussle is an incredible name to recall. He was someone that was able to overcome intense odds that were stacked against him and he was able to not only succeed but to create a new system of success that actually rewards hard work it's really just inspiring individual and it's cool to be able to honor him then i'm going back to quota water and adding another abstract layer on my peach based nails And now I'm gonna add another layer on those nails with that feel in my tiger stripes from Hair Nova. Now, since I knew that this polish was super thick, I'm gonna really, really wipe off the brush to create a very kind of like dry brush, paint strokey type effect on these nails. I don't want insane amounts of opacity because I'm really layering this up. Okay, and now it's time to finally add something to these hot pink nails. My goal was to kind of do this kind of glitter sandwichy thing. So I'm taking just, again, like not a ton of product on the edge of that brush and just kind of abstractly placing it all over the nail and trying to concentrate it in little clusters, almost like little galaxies. This is something that I imagine you could do with like a makeup sponge to get the similar effect, but again, why dirty another product or use another product when you could just get good at using the brush that comes in the bottle? Then I'm taking this beautiful inky blue from Brooklyn called Stoop Night to add some detail to that nail. Now, I guess what I was going for is a kind of like, almost like tie-dye effect, like creating these kind of like big arcs with little kind of segments in them. And so that's kind of where I was going with this. And as you can see, as I add more colors to it, I try to create like a really kind of interesting tie dye effect. I think this is like a kind of look that I might want to explore more in a more in-depth way, like creating a kind of color gradient with different nail polishes that resembles tie-dye on the nail. I love when you add, when you put patterns on nails that like defy the kind of form of nail polish. Like tie-dye is something that like I can't really imagine how one would tie-dye a nail, but trying to create like a facsimile of that, that's kind of fun sometimes. So I've added quarter water to that nail as well, and now I'm adding like another layer of that kind of tie dye arc with feeling my tiger stripes from Paranova. And then really using just like the minimal amount of product that's left on that brush to really just kind of dapple some of that beige across the whole nail, just to create like a very kind of like worn, more interesting, pattern. This was like the nail that I really didn't know what I was going to make of it, and I'm really happy with how this came out. So this was like phase one where I thought I was done with the look, so I decided to clean up my nails with acetone and put a top coat on. As you will see very shortly, I actually had to add some more polish, but... So I actually took a break to eat, which was a bad idea with semi-wet nail polish, so you'll see that I have to go back and fix some of these nails. But for the time being, I'm adding jellies, which is a standout product, I think, from Brooklyn Polished. This is their gel-like top coat. They have a two-in-one base coat, which you can use as a top coat, but I found that this top coat, Jellies, is one of the best top coats I have ever used. It is gel-like without actually being a gel polish, so you don't need to cure this. There's no UV light involved, but it does create a very hard, very long-lasting coat on the nails, and I never thought that I would be able to find a polish 
that works as well as some of my favorite top coats that is also vegan. But Jelly's is the one, man. Okay, so like I said, I had to come back and touch up some nails that I had chipped. And that's also another reason why I love these abstract looks is that you can just keep layering and adding things and just kind of making it your own and going with the flow, like trying to do a very kind of staid, solid pattern. It's It requires you to be a little bit more careful with it, but I'm a free spirit, baby. Then I just added another coat of jellies and that's it. This is the look. Here's the finished look. Let's change out this ugly background. And I'll show off these kind of incredible, crazy, eclectic nails. That rainbow po sparkle polish really doesn't, the lighting here doesn't really do it justice. So I'm gonna use my camera flash and like my phone flash and just show you what to really bring out that crazy dimensional hollow effect of that glitter polish. I don't know, I, I this was definitely a look that I, at the time when I did it, I was really in need of just a pick-me-up. Like I needed to be able to kind of look down at my fingers and just be connected to immediate joy. And I feel like the best nail looks do just that. They're interesting enough for you to be able to look at over and over again and still want to keep looking at them. And they should do something for you. They should put something creative into them so that when you look at them, you get some kind of inspiration back. And that's exactly what this nail look is. And most of my looks, I like to try to keep as inspired and fun as I like to think I am. <laughs> Again, supporting Black-owned businesses is just part of the very intense work that we all have to engage in in order to help us move forward as a society. It's a very small part, but I think it's a very easy thing to do. So next time you're in the market for some new nail polishes, check out some of these brands. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and if you want me to be able to continue to keep making videos like this, consider becoming a patron of mine on Patreon. Thanks so much to everyone that is a patron of mine. As you know, you are the reason these videos happen. I'm Kimberly Clark, Black Lives Matter, defund the police, and wear a goddamn mask. Bye.